All right, so pressure system circulation. When we look at a low pressure system or a high pressure system, the way the wind circulates changes for each, and it's important to understand each so we can better predict the weather and learn how this weather is going to come towards us or whether we're going to have some cooler air coming from the north or maybe some warmer air from the south. If there was right here in the map, we see a low pressure system in the Great Plains area. We know if that is an L, that represents the lowest pressure. So around that low, there would be higher pressure at different places around this low. If that low represents the lowest pressure, obviously these places would be higher. We know that air moves from high to low, so the air is going to move in towards this low, but we can't forget about our friend the Coriolis effect. As the air moves in towards that low, it's going to curve to the right. So the air is being pushed that way from high pressure to low pressure, but we know that it's not actually going to move that way. It's going to curve to the right, so the air will move this way. The air curves to the right. High to low, but curves to the right. High to low, but curves to the right. Some people still have an issue with the high to low pressure wind there, and they're saying, hey, that arrow is not curving to the right. That arrow is curving to the left. How could that be? But remember, we're talking about moving in the direction of the wind. So if I put this upside down, we see that as the air moves from the high to the low, it curves to the right. So that is curving to the right, although it doesn't necessarily look like it is curving to the right. All right so in a low pressure system, the air is going to be moving in towards the low, and it sets up circulation that is counterclockwise. If we look, the air has a counterclockwise circulation. So here's a map of the United States, and we have a low pressure sitting in the middle of the United States. And if that's low pressure, then there's higher pressure around. And if everybody in the United States blew a couple bubbles, we would see that the air would move from the higher pressure towards low, right? Air moves from high to low. Well, there's a low in the middle, higher pressure around it. Air is going to move in towards the low. And this is what it would look like if the Earth wasn't spinning. But since the Earth is spinning, we're going to get these bubbles are going to curve. And they set up a circulation that is counterclockwise. So in a low pressure system, the circulation of the wind is counterclockwise and in towards the low. Counterclockwise and in. If we head on back to our notes, we see that the circulation in a low pressure system is air moves into a low and air circulates counterclockwise in a low. From here, we could then easily assume the opposite is going to be true for high pressure. If that's the highest pressure there in the center, the air is going to want to move from high to a lower pressure at different places around that high. If that's lower pressure here, the air is going to move from high to the lower pressure. But instead of going straight from high too low, we know that it's going to curve to the right. That air is going to curve to the right. High to low, but curves to the right. High to low, but curves to the right. High to low, but curves to the right. And now we have, instead of air moving in, we have air that's moving away from a high, out of a high. And we see a different clockwise, we see a different circulation. We see clockwise circulation. So in a high pressure system, the air is moving out of the high and the air is circulating clockwise in a high. So it's the exact opposite of what we saw of the low. And we see the same thing to be true when we look at our bubble map, that we now see that the winds are circulating clockwise, and we see that those bubbles are moving away or out of the high pressure. So air moves into a low, but out of a high. And let's put two of them together. There's our high pressure. Here's a low pressure. And we see the air moves out of the high, but into the low. It moves clockwise around the high pressure, counterclockwise around the low pressure. This is not something you need to necessarily memorize because you could just go back and look at your map. You could draw an H and know that the air moves towards the low 
And since it's in the northern hemisphere, it's going to curve to the right. Now, if you're thinking, if you're a little advanced, you say, well, wait a second, what if I was in the southern hemisphere? And that's true. If you're in the southern hemisphere, things are going to go a little bit different. If there's a low pressure there, here we have the wind moving into a low and it's circulating counterclockwise. But if we move to the southern hemisphere, here we are in Argentina, we see that in a low pressure system, it's moving clockwise. That's because the Coriolis effect is opposite in the southern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, we get a curve to the left. So here we have this low pressure. The low pressure is also known as a cyclone, which really means it's a storm. Low pressure, loser weather. It brings stormy, cloudy weather. Well, it's not going to stay stormy and cloudy right there around Nebraska all the time. That low pressure is going to move. And when they move across the United States, they generally move from the west towards the east. As this low pressure comes towards our area, so we see uh, we're coming towards the Great Lakes. We're right just below uh, Lake Ontario. You'll notice that when the low pressure is to our west, the air comes from the south into our area. It brings warm air up from the south when the low pressure is there. And as the low pressure moves over our area and comes to the other side, now you'll see where the bubbles are coming from. They're com coming from uh, Quebec and Ontario. The colder Canadian air is now coming across the, the Great Lakes into our area. And that's also what sets up things like lake effect snow. So where this low is and what path it takes across the United States is very important in forecasting weather. S these storms, and remember that storm is a low pressure system, also known as a cyclone, a low pressure system. They generally move across the United States from the southwest towards the northeast. And if we take a look at where we are right here, you'll notice that these lows generally move into our area from the southwest. So if we know that a low is moving to, towards our area, if we know we, there's a low pressure system that's here, we know that it's probably going to be moving towards our area in this way. So if we see a low pressure off to the southwest, we know that that low pressure might be bringing our weather towards us in the future. This sets up these storm tracks. Right? And these storm tracks come from what we studied before, the Coriolis effect. All right? Remember we looked at this part, this was on uh, page 14 of your reference tables. If we were to put the United States, where we are between 30 and 60 degrees north, uh, hang Florida down just a little bit more there. That makes sense. That's where the winds are blowing. The planetary winds caused by the Coriolis effect generally move like this. And look at how that matches up so well right there. If we zoom in, we see that the planetary winds, these are the things that push or blow that low pressure system across the United States from southwest towards northeast. So that low pressure starting there, and then moving across the United States in that direction is caused by these planetary winds that we see on page 14 of the reference tables. So storm movement or cyclone movement, storm tracks, low pressure systems move across the Earth based on these planetary winds. You can use page 14 of your reference tables. It'll really help you out with a lot of the questions.